A couple months ago, Mr. Beast's best friend, Chris Tyson, came out as non-binary. Now, the internet proceeded to explode. People were concerned that this would be the downfall of one of YouTube's greatest creators, or at least most popular creators, because Chris was proving to be such an eyesore in what should have been family-friendly content. People could see a shift in Chris's appearance, and it only became more evident when Chris came out as non-binary. Now, we covered this on my channel because it had implications to how we understand gender in light of God's design. Well, Chris has come back again with another interview, what could be seen as a tell-all on Anthony Padilla's YouTube channel. So today we're going to respond and react to this interview, at least important clips of this video, because as Christians, we need to know how to respond to the zeitgeist of our day. People deciding that they can change their gender all of a sudden based on how they feel. Is this something that we can support as Christians? And how do we lovingly and compassionately yet truthfully talk to people in our lives that are struggling with gender dysphoria? These are all important questions, but without further ado, let's jump in to the video. Before we do that though, just a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon who supports what I do on this YouTube channel and equipping people to follow Jesus daily. If that's a mission that you want to get behind, head to the link in my description and sign up today. You get access to our Discord. Um, we do video chats and there's exclusive videos on there for you as well. Now, back onto the video. Hello, Chris. Hello, Anthony. I feel like the earliest videos you guys made really were capturing that that friendship. That yeah, the it was just had. us just doing whatever we could think of it because there was no rules back then. There was no like algorithm or anything. It was just whatever you could film, put it on YouTube. Yeah, I feel like about how many, maybe six months to a year ago, I started to see a change in your appearance. Yes. You started to look a little bit less masculine, a little bit less beardy. Yeah. At the exact same time, you look like you were glowing, like you were more excited, like yeah. your posture was better, like you were like excited I about life. They're trying to paint this as a very joyous, happy thing. But even as you're watching that, you can see the stark difference in and contrast between how he used to look and how he's trying to show himself to be. Um, he talks about how he's on a hormone replacement therapy now. We talked about in the previous video that I made about Chris, um, how he has a son, I believe it's a son. And now his son is basically, is like literally losing his dad. You think about how important father-son relationships are. I wrote a whole book about it, for goodness sakes. Chris is basically basically abandoning his child in pursuit of what he sees as his fullest self, his most happy self. But sin, it can lead you into a happy place for a little bit. You feel like you're mo my most authentic self. But until we are actually stepping into God's design, until we are stepping into who God created us to be, then we'll never truly be find that joy, find that happiness. Because Chris is finding that right now in his temporal circumstance, in his ability to dress up as a woman and to put makeup on his face but truly true joy and happiness is found in the unchanging God and knowing that God is for us that he will never leave us nor forsake us and having a right relationship with him it won't be satisfied in these temporal things and that's why I'm so sad for Chris because I know this is an empty road for him but he's choosing to do it out of his selfishness but we've all been there we've all been there when we're following our own sinful desires pursuing that that which we think will fulfill us ultimately but sin is an empty empty road. It is a dead end. God did not make a mistake when he made Chris. And I know that is seen as hate speech nowadays. That is bigotry, but it's the truth. You've had a lot of people speculating on your gender, yes. you know, just you growing out your hair, yeah. you, I mean, today you, you showed up fully I did. presenting I did. as a woman. I did because I am a woman. Oh shit. Ah, she you've heard. Ne <laughs> you've never said that before, right? I've never said that publicly, no. But I've I've been fully like confident in that decision for over a year now. This is a lie. It really is. Um, Chris is is dressing up as a woman, and everyone is kind of accommodating around him, and you know, affirming this this identity of his. But it's just like it's the ultimate gaslighting. It really is, and I'm not sure if that's the, necessarily the correct term, but it's him trying to convince everybody, hey, hey, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I, if I say it, that means it's true. It's easy embrace of a subjective morality, a subjective truth that I can create my own reality. I, what I say is truth. 
but it totally disregards the fact that God has oriented the universe in a certain way and that he has the veto on truth. He has the decisive and the definitive word on what is true. Ultimately, what I want for Chris, and I want to be very straight up with you if you're watching this video and maybe you vehemently disagree with what I'm trying to say here, I want you to know that we were all in this place of rebellion against God, whether it, it's you want to tr transition your gender or you're in lust or pornography or greed or hatred or whatever else it is, we were all caught up in, in, in sin, dead in our trespasses and sins, it says in Ephesians. But God in his mercy sent Jesus, who is fully God and fully man without sin, to come to this earth, to live the sinless life that we couldn't live, to die on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God, our sin, our rebellion. It, it says that the wages of sin is death. That's what we deserve. But Jesus took that for us so that we could have a right relationship with him. But he did not stay dead. He rose again on the third day, defeating sin and death. And what he calls us to is repentance. It's to say, God, I was wrong about this stuff. God, I, all these things that I sought and I tried to fill me, these were wrong. And I turn from these things and I put my faith in you as my savior, as my Lord. And when you do that, and when God gives you that gift of faith, you're brought from death into life. He gives you a new heart with new desires. It says that he makes you into a new creation. And when we talk so much about identity here, Chris is trying to find his identity, a fulfilling identity. He, he talks about, oh, I just want to be myself, my true authentic self. Well, our most truest and authentic selves are, are when we are stepping into who God created us to be. And we can only do that through Jesus. And he makes us into a new creation where our identity is not in the things of this world, is not in our, our sexuality or or, you know, whatever kind of proclivity or desire that we have. It's not in our sin anymore. It's in him. There was a voice in the back of my head that just hated me. Everything I did hated me. And it wasn't until like I started accepting myself and being kind to others and like just listening to what my body wanted. Like that's when that voice started going away, started taking HRT. Haven't heard from that voice in a very long time. Where do you think that part of you is gone? I think it's, I hope it's locked away. <laughs> and truly the only one who can silence that voice of guilt and shame is Jesus. And when we are not in Christ, when we do not have a relationship with God, that, that voice of guilt and shame, that's legitimate because we are rebellion against God. We are guilty before him. We are shameful before his sight. But yet we still have that image of God in us that we, we still have dignity and worth. And God is calling us to come home to say, lay this down at my feet. I've taken all this guilt and shame upon myself and that you can be free now, you can be free of it. It was kind of weird to see people be like, oh, now Jimmy's put in between a rock and a hard place where he obviously doesn't want to support Chris, but the left would be so mad if he didn't. And I'm like, all these speculations, all these crazy things. I told Jimmy like seven years ago, we were all hanging out and we were having a good time. I had just been really like thinking all that day about like my gender and everything. I just blurted out to them. I don't want to be a man anymore. Just out of nowhere? Out of nowhere in front of all of them and then started like crying. Mm. And the support I got from them in that moment was like, that's when I knew I was like, okay, like I have my friends back everybody else. You can see how emotionally volatile these situations are. Someone that is struggling with their gender identity, somebody that feels like they should be somebody else, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a boy, but I, I think I should be a girl. I'm, I'm a woman, but I think I should be a man. And you, you understand, you can begin to sympathize if you don't experience it um, with, with that deep tension going on in their hearts and their minds. But what you don't, ha what you don't do and what you can't do, you can't do this as a Christian is affirm the lie, affirm that this will make them better or make them happier or make them fulfilled. You're not disregarding of the tension and the pain that they're experiencing, right? Because that's real. And you can't just say, oh, stop feeling that way, right? They might still feel that way. Gender dysphoria is a real thing. People experience this. Uh, 
But what is not helpful for them is to just say, you know what, if that's how you feel in this moment, you're, you're right, that'll fix it up, fix everything. That'll give you the identity that you've always wanted. All that tension and, and that, uh, you know, dis-ease within your soul, that will be cured by this one decision, by putting on makeup, by growing your hair long, by wearing a dress, that will make you happy. That's not a friend. A friend is someone who says, hey, I understand that you feel this way and I'm here for you in the midst of it, but I don't think this is going to be best for you. I don't think this is what God wants for you. And I, I, I don't know really how to help you work through some of those emotions at this point or some of those feelings. I'm not really equipped in that, but I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to be there for you, but I can't support you taking these hormones or doing these things to your body that I just don't think are going to be beneficial to you ultimately. And if that means the end of our friendship, if that means you don't want me around, like that would make me sad because I really care for you and I love you as a person, but I I can't support you doing this because I don't think it's going to be best for you. And if you can understand that, if you really do understand that I don't think this is good for you, then you can understand that as a friend, I just can't support you in this. So you've changed your the way you present, you've mm-hmm. changed the name and the things that you prefer yeah. people to call you. You've changed your pronouns. Yeah. Have you changed your voice? Because I know that that's something that trans people also work toward. I am working on it. Um, so currently I'm working with the Seattle Voice Labs. Um, it's a Discord server where um, they offer free lessons, they offer paid lessons, but Claire, she is incredible. Mm. She's been teaching me and she really pushed me to do a voice. Like today? Yeah. She wanted you to do. His- she thinks I'm ready to do like uh, do a, do a sentence to give it a little sneak peek. Hey, Anthony! Congratulations on buying Smosh. <laughs> Thank Is you. That, that was good. I can't help but notice Anthony's response to that voice, just pure and utter laughter. Why? Because what Chris is doing is unnatural. It's, it, it's, it's like if I were to make a, a, a woman voice, people would laugh at that. And I would want them to laugh at that because it's not natural. It's not, that's what comedy is. It's doing something that is, you know, catching people off guard with something that they didn't expect. When you see Chris, when you see a man and he's speaking as a woman, that's funny. And it should be. But at the same time, it's it's sad because this is the play. They want you to be like, this is a completely normal thing. It, it's it's a normal thing for, you know, somebody like Chris to all of a sudden try to change his voice in order to appear more feminine. Uh, to me, uh, just it's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And I know uh, people said in the last video, too, um, that he's he's making these choices and he's hurting a lot of people as, as he's doing this. And I totally see that as well. Um, and I feel great compassion for those people, like, deeply. Um, his his wife, his former wife and his son, like, that is awful. And, and it's so sad. And I also feel a deep compassion for Chris, too, because um, this isn't going to satisfy him. This isn't going to lead him down the path that he thinks it will, um, but he's re- rebelling against God right now. And I know how that feels. And I want him to know Christ. I want him to see the transformation that can happen and the true identity that's found in God. That's what I want for all of you, um, whether you're struggling with gender dysphoria or not, for you to find your identity in God and not see these other things, these things of the world or these identities that the world is trying to push at you. They're cheap substitutes for the true and secure identity we have as children of God in his family. I think for the most part, that closes the chapter on Chris Tyson and his transition. Uh, Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being kind in the comments down below. I know there'll be people that do not agree with what I'm saying that are watching this video. If you've watched to the end, thank you for giving me this time and space to explain what I believe according to the Bible. I truly appreciate you. I love everybody that watches my channel and thank you for supporting what I'm doing as well if you support on Patreon. Uh, Until next time, God bless.